I won't stop till I hear him say Warning, the information that we convey in these videos and the content on this page simply provides general consumer information. It is not legal advice or regulatory guidance. It is not intended to sway your personal bias in any way. We are simply just relaying information already available to the general public. We highly suggest you do your own research and draft your own opinion on the topics disclosed in this video breakdown. Without further ado, sit back, relax, enjoy this video breakdown, and if you're not already subscribed to the YouTube channel, consider doing so now. Look at all of their faces. They're all smiling. Oh my gosh. All righty, what is going on, CyberX Advanced YouTubers? Welcome back to the CyberX YouTube page. In today's video breakdown, I have a very interesting video clip breakdown for you all here today, where we're going to be picking apart some things uh, from a panel discussion full of central bankers. Uh, we're going to save that for the end of this video breakdown. First, I'm going to get into not believing the lies that you see on the mainstream media, really understanding you know, what type of investor you are. We're going to go into um, some tweets that I put out to you all days in advance, like we do here on the CyberX YouTube and on the Twitter space, giving people information before it hits the general public. Um, so I'm going to be paying attention to some of the key phrases and key words that uh, I saw on an interview with a seasoned investor uh, on Stansberry Research. So we're going to dive into those video clips as well. I hope that you all enjoy this video breakdown. If you do, make sure that you smash that thumbs up button and subscribe to the YouTube channel. This is a very interesting and intuitive video breakdown. Sit back, relax, and pay attention. So I'm going to be reading some tweets in correlation with the video clips. The first one that I have here for you all today is, I tweeted out on December 6, 2022, heartless demon worshiping elites run our entire planet and no one cares. Let me show you what it is that I mean by that. We're going to go over here to this interview that Daniela Combo did on Stansberry Research with Rick Rules, and I want you to pay attention to what this gentleman says, okay? Well, that, that's what I'm scratching my head, that, and I'm happy you're bringing this up, is where is where was the due diligence? Where was the due diligence by the SEC and FINRA with regards to Bernie Madoff? Uh, when your listeners believe that the big institutional investors, and in particular, the big regulators have their backs, that's the beginning of the end of their fortunes. You need to be your own regulator. You need to do your own due diligence. Okay, so right there, he said that when you start to believe that the regulators hey, have your backs, that is when your money will disappear. Okay, that was very interesting. So it's just, you know, this this video breakdown came out uh, roughly about five hours ago, and I tweeted that out to you all a couple of days ago. Again, you know, spreading awareness here on the CyberX YouTube channel. That's what we're really uh, truly about here at CyberX is allowing people to really wake up and see what's going on in this trading space behind the scenes. Um, so that's going to lead me over here, understanding that. Nobody in this market space except for you can have your own back. You have to be the preserver of your capital. You can't just be out and about believing everything that you see on the inter internet, believing influencers, making executive decisions off of trading signals and other people's opinions. So I said to you all on December 15, 2022, following rumors is a big red flag. Mistakes that novice and beginner traders make. I've been trading for almost eight years. Okay. Eight years in this market, and one of the biggest things that held me back my first two years of trading was paying attention to what other people were doing in the market, getting signals, trying to be part of something that nobody, realistically speaking, that you could ever come into tandem with is a part of, and that's the market. You have to be able to create your own bias. You have to be able to go your own direction. What do I mean by this? Okay, We're going to go over to another video clip of the Stansbury Research Gentleman. His name's Rick Rules, and listen to what he has to say about not taking other people's opinions and really focusing and staying in your own lane. Investors in the country or the protection that you expect to enjoy from the CFTC, from the SEC, from FINRA, it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. You need to protect yourself. Enron is an example of a fraud that should have been easy to catch. Yeah. Madoff is an example of a fraud that should have been easy to catch. FTX is an example of a fraud that should have been easy to well, detect. And do you the blame... only line of defense yeah. that you have, Daniela, is you. Well, and, and, and 
what about the line of defense that a lot of these celebrities, I'm not going to name them now, who have come out and said, you know, we were all fooled by this, but yet they were paid millions of dollars to endorse FTX. Is that enough of a defense that, hey, we, we didn't know what was going, what was going on? Well, that's, a, that's a different circumstance. And again, that's the fault of the investor. Why would you care what a basketball player or an actress has to say about how you ought to invest? Because people I care. trust those bet, people, folks. Uh, people trust those people, unfortunately. They, they see them as idols. And as long as, as long as people are dumb and trusting, they will be separated from their money, including those athletes and actresses. <laughs> as long as people are dumb and trusting, they will be susceptible to losing their money. Why would you trust a movie actress or a basketball player. I get that they're these big movie entities, right? They got your attention, the media, the mainstream. Ooh, ooh, ah, ah, what are they doing, right? Because they got the millions. They got the money to waste. And so many people followed them into a war and a battle that they had no business getting involved in and got wrecked, wrecked, wiped, trillions gone from this cryptocurrency market space since last November, okay? <laughs> wake up, people realize what I'm trying and attempting to do for individuals here at CyberX is really, truly wake people up, tap in. I said, following rumors is a big red flag, mistakes that novice and beginner traders make. The majority of individuals that trusted those athletes, those movie actors, they're beginner novice traders. Do you really think that millionaires and billionaires are out there taking advice from, I don't know, I don't know, one of the, uh, Stephen Curry, who supported FTX? No. They're not listening to him. They're not listening to him. Who's listening to these mainstream influencers? Retail, herd, sheep getting wrecked in the market, okay? Steer away from that, which is one of the reasons why we created CyperX is to steer people in a more logical, realistic direction, okay? Moving on, next two tweets. Um, these are the last two tweets for this video breakdown. I said to you all, across the board, cryptocurrencies are heavily discounted as of as of right now. And that is something that we have to take into consideration. That's something that I've been taking into consideration. It is not financial advice. It is your awareness as an individual investor to understand that, yes, the market amongst majority of altcoins that have a successful future, and again, in my personal opinion, are 80 to 90% discounted. You have to take that into an understanding. Now, I said, personally, I am accumulating at these prices with the awareness that price could go lower. Any of the money that I'm implementing into the market right now, I understand that there could be a potential leg lower. So again, this is not financial advice with the, with the capital that I'm implementing now. I am willing to risk that capital, okay? You have to come to terms with that as an investor. If you're playing in the space right now, that number one, you're most likely going to see more volatility to the downside. That is a possibility, or it could potentially go to zero and you could lose it all. Those are two things you have to accept. But I said in this tweet, I'm playing both sides of the fence. Therefore, I have capital reserves to implement in case lower prices do come into fruition. So I have capital that I'm implementing now and I'm willing to lose. And I also have cash reserves on the side, money that I'm willing to implement in case we do go lower. Okay. Why am I doing that? Number one, because nobody can guess a bottom. So I don't want to miss out on 80 to 90% discounted prices. But with that, I'm only going to implement money that I'm willing to lose while having cash reserves on the side. Now, I want you to listen to what this gentleman says, okay? Before we do that, I said this to you guys on December 6, 2022. Pay attention to the words exactly because this interview, okay, came out five hours ago. Word for word, this gentleman who is a seasoned investor, right? said exactly what I said here 15 days ago. I'm just trying to show you all that we give people information that is not commonly discussed about or talked about from the mainstream media way in advance till it comes out to the general public. I said, the global economy is about to be so freaking bad. People that are unaware of this next liquidity crisis are so screwed. The elites are acting like nothing is wrong. Prepare yourselves now. This next crisis is going to be 1,000 times worse than the global financial crisis in 2008. Pay attention to what this gentleman says when he talks about cash reserves and when he talks about the global financial crisis, okay? How, how important is it right now to have cash 
I, I think it's critical. Six months yeah. ago, critical, like at what spectrum, at what level? I, I think it's critical. Uh, I think investors need to understand that holding cash yeah. uh, imposes a cost because the deposit interest rate that you re that you receive is less than the decline in the purchasing power uh, of your savings, which is to say your currency is depreciating a 7%, you're getting paid 4% interest rate. It costs you. But I think that cost uh, is going to be necessary. I look at that cost, the foregone interest, if you will, as an option payment on the ability to have cash so that I can take advantage of volatility rather than being taken advantage of. I think that there's a chance. I don't know how good a chance, but I think that there's a chance that we're going to suffer a liquidity squeeze in the next five years or a liquidity squeeze for a liquidity squeeze in the next five years that we're going to have a replay of 2008, probably around institutional investors and the long bond. Hmm. You get what I'm saying? Okay. Two things that I put out to people well in advance about having capital and cash reserves on the side and being aware that the next global financial crisis is going to be really freaking bad. <laughs> it, it literally cracks me up that this came out five hours ago. And it's just what why I'm laughing is because people will sleep on the information that we're putting out and then go FOMO out the mouth to go find good, valuable information when it's already been right there in front of their faces. This gentleman said it's critical to have cash. And he said it's better to have cash on the side to be able to take advantage of the volatility instead of being taken advantage of. All right, so now we're going to go into the panel discussion with the central bankers. This is mind-blowing. So if you're still here, smash that thumbs up button, subscribe to the YouTube channel, because this, like, this is from the Bank of International Settlements YouTube. So <laughs> watch what these individuals say before we get into the cool stuff. Just to solidify what this gentleman said about the liquidity crisis and what I told you all days ago, all right? This tweet right here, I said on November 14th, 2022, I have a high degree of conviction in my idea, but I don't have certainty in anything. The reason behind that is because we are operating in an uncertain environment. That means that I can do research on companies and cryptocurrency technology, okay? For example, I love to do Ripple and XRP research. I love to do utility-driven research. Ripple's just always been a backstop of mine. Uh, I've been invested in XRP since 2016, okay? So I have a high conviction in my personal idea of what the future is going to behold, but I don't have certainty in it, okay? And I said, I think this is one of the most uncertain times in our history, and that is a fact, ladies and gentlemen. I also think everybody should maintain a certain level of flexibility in whatever their view is in order to react in an efficient manner. That means if we go lower, be able to react to it. If the bottom's in, be able to react to it. You should be able to determine and orchestrate and characterize day trading capabilities to be able to react on the fly if you're involved in this space, okay? Because if you have money into this market right now as a long-term investor and you cannot handle a volatile downside move, you need to be able to withdraw your capital, have it in reserves on the side in USD coin or some type of stable coin to re-implement it in, in need be. And again, that's not financial advice. I'm just showing you all, you know, a perspective that a lot of people I think need to take into consideration surrounding the level of flexibility that you need to have as an investor in this market space right now, okay? Do your research, understand what type of trader you are mentally before involving your capital, all right? So let's go over here. And the reason why I'm saying this is because listen to these central bankers mention the freaking financial crisis and that it is going to happen. They literally say that for this adoption to take place, a crisis has to happen. Listen, it's nuts. It's the pertinent issues that we as uh, central banks worry about, particularly when the crisis comes. When the sun is shining, nobody worries. When uh, there is a crisis, that's when we come up to clean. That's when we... We come to clean up the mess. And I think the cost will be less if we dealt with it at the beginning. Well, as, as, as Stefan said, that the, we only we, we, we never learn, and maybe the only times where we do learn temporarily is from, in financial terms anyway, is when we have a crisis. So I guess I'm interested in um, any of you, uh, whether you think this will require um, a, a crisis invo involving stable coins, and if so, how... How imminent is that kind of um, 
uh, car crash uh, in this world, or are we still at the very early stages that we couldn't really have a car crash quite yet? We'll have a car crash, but not quite yet. And I, <laughs> I think it's, it's, it's only when we have the car crash that this will get a lot of attention. What? What? Oh my goodness gracious. Are y'all listening to that? He literally just said, I think we will have a car crash and it's not until the car crash happens that this will gain attention. Look at all of their faces. They're all smiling. Oh my gosh. He's smiling. He's smiling. He's smiling. He's smiling. She's laughing. Do you see? Do you see what I'm seeing right now? Okay. Something big has to happen for this market space to flourish. There is going to be an extreme amount of volatility in the near future. This is not to scare you. This is not FUD. This is what has to happen. It is a, it is a part of the healthy market. Imagine in the early internet adoption days, if the internet existed, okay? That's why so many people are freaking out about this stuff right now is because back when the boom and bust cycle, the bubble popped for the internet days and the market tanked before it freaking went parabolic, there was no access to this type of information. You couldn't go and research about your most favorite uh, internet project because the internet didn't necessarily exist yet. People didn't know how to function and operate on it, okay? Now we have the internet. We have the ability to do research. We have the ability to watch videos like this. These, these elites, again, back to this tweet, heartless demon worshiping elites run our entire planet and no one cares, are laughing, okay? In previous video breakdowns, I've shown you how they've had panel discussions and talked about retail liquidity. They have literally talked about retail money being the heart that is going to drive this market forward, but a lot of people have to lose money first, okay? This is the stuff they don't want you to see, ladies and gentlemen, but they will put it in front of you and drip feed it to you for you to go check out yourself, but 90% of people will sleep on this. You just heard it from them laughing, talking about a liquidity crisis. She asked the question, will it require a crisis? They all laughed. And he said, the crash is coming. Interesting. That's all I'm saying. It's interesting. I have two more video clips to break down to you all. I hope that you all are sticking around. Hope that you all are enjoying this. Smash that thumbs up button if you are. Help boost this video out to more individuals like yourselves. Because now we're going to go to the more positive side of things, okay? The more positive light, right? I said to you all in a tweet, this is the last tweet. Then I'm going to go over today. I know that y'all are probably tired of the tweets. Worst case scenario, XRP holders lose the money they already should have accepted, possibly losing. That's the worst case scenario. And every investor should only be invested with money they are willing to lose. The best case scenario is we are right about the future price and utility. And then XRP has its day in the sun. Okay. And I said this to you all on December 9th, and you all heard this central banker gentleman right here say that... When the crisis comes, the central bankers come to clean it all up, and then the sunshine comes, right? Okay, he literally said the term sunshine. Hmm. Okay, XRP will have its day in the sun, right? Check this out. They talk about the future of blockchain, and they say that everything will be digital. And that's going to change. When we move to blockchain, say, in 10 years, when everything is interoperable, when everything is interoperable, the standards for how you get data are going to be completely different. And I think central banks have to be involved here. Okay. A little bit of a, a, a ballpark prediction when he said 10 years, I think that it's going to happen way faster than that, of course. But this is another verification that it is coming. The future is coming. He literally said, when everything is on the blockchain in 10 years from now and everything's interoperable, what? They're not just having panel discussions on this to toot your horn? This stuff is happening. Do you all see how early we are? And 10 years from now, is going to be 10 years older than he already is now, right? He's probably going to be retired, not worrying about this. But he is part of the people that are stitching the new financial ecosystem together and listen to what he's saying. We're going to now go to six minutes and eight seconds where they talk about cross-border payments. Ones that we you know, went through 100 years ago. The other thing I would say is that the place that will benefit the most from this is cross-border transactions and global supply chains. But you can do all that with a stable coin. Uh, 
Now, something interesting to say the least is on this channel specifically, we've covered how there are PDFs from these central bankers and from these global elites mentioning XRP and XLM as a stable coin and also both solving cross-border payment issues. And last but not least, this is the last video clip that I have for you all today. I hope that you all have enjoyed this video breakdown. We're going to go to seven minutes and 43 seconds, and I will leave you all with this. As always, be cognizant, be aware. Make sure that you all are doing your own personal research. Nothing that I constitute here is financial advice. And I will see you all in the next YouTube video breakdown. Here's the last video clip. And, and the basic starting point is very, very simple. In the old days, everything was on paper. Now we're moving into another world where nothing will be on paper. Nothing will be on paper. Now, when that technological change happens, does that, would we like to maintain roughly the same structure that has been established for about 100, 150 years ago in many, many countries, or should we just let it go? And then we came to the conclusion that no, we should not let it go because that would imply that in my country, we would only have private sector money available to the general public. And if history gives us any guidance, that's a bad idea. And all the more so in a small... Hmm, okay. I thought I was going to go, but this man is dropping gems. Private sector money. Hmm, well, guess what? They came after Ripple, right? Now what do you see? All the CBDCs, the central banks catching up. It's all a smokescreen, ladies and gentlemen. It's all a smokescreen. Everybody take it easy. They weren't going to allow private sectors to thrive. I've told you guys that in previous video breakdowns. Everybody take it easy. <laughs> Do your own research. And I'll see you all in the next video breakdown. I won't stop till I hear him say. Oh, oh.